The title of today's class, Pride. Pride. We go into the Bible again and search God's words. What do you say about pride? Go to Job chapter 40. I read from verse 1 down. Job 40. I read 1 through 14. Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contended with Almighty instruct him? So you see that the most I say to Job, You contended with me. Are you trying to tell me what to do? That's the most I ask in Job. You trying to tell me what to do? He that reproved God, let him answer it. Did you say that? Both I say, you reproving me? Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. So he knew he that the most I put him in the place. The most I say, no in place. You see that? Then Job say what? Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. He said, I'm just a sinner. What shall I answer thee? Is it that? What shall I answer thee? Most I will go, how will I contend with you? How will I go instruct you or reprove you? I will lay my hand upon my mouth. You see what? Okay, okay, I'll go, I'll go see my, my lips now. Stop complaining, in other words. Stop whining for, you put, for the punishment the most I was inflicted him. That's, that's what it's going about. Why? Job, Job was saying, why me? Why are you going through this? As us, the children of Israel in the diaspora. The book of Job is a parable about the children of Israel. The Israelites kept in the diaspora, conquered. And they, you see what? Why do you, have you heard it all? Why me? Why this happening to me? Why I lose my job? Why I lose my family? Why I lose this? Why? Why? Would it be always who we hear from kids growing up? Why? 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 Because the most I say, you contending with me? I I punishing you? I chastening you? Is that cry out to me? Once have I spoke, but I will not answer. Yes, twice, but I will proceed no further. So Job say what? Sorry, Job say I spoke once, but I will not answer. Yeah, twice, but I will proceed no further. Then answered the Lord unto Job, out of the whirlwind, and said, See what Moses said to him, Go up thy loins now like a man. So you children of Israel, Israelites, scattered in the diaspora. Moses said, Go up the loins like a man. Be manful. Take your punishment manfully. Repent. Confess and forsake your sin and don't be prideful. <laughs> don't be full of pride. He said, Humble down. That's what Moses said. Get off the high horse. Humble down. Acknowledge that they offend me and return to my laws. The Moses said, Then answer the Lord unto Job, out of the whirlwind, say, and said, Go up thy loins now like a man. Be like a man. Go to 1 Kings 2. <laughs> Go to 1 Kings chapter 2 and verse 1. Now the days of David drew nigh. So David was about to die. He's getting older. That he should die. And he charged Solomon his son saying, I go the way of all the earth. So Solomon was king at the time. He said what? I, he said I go to my, I go to die. I go to die. I go in. Be thou strong therefore and show thyself a man. How to be strong? Show thyself a man. And how to show yourself a man? And keep the charge of the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, and his commandments, and his judgments, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. He said what? Showing yourself a man is doing what? Walking in the commandments, keeping God's commandments, his judgment, his testimonies, and his laws. That's how he shows himself a man. <laughs> Do you see that? Go back to Job 40 and verse 7. Good, most I say what? And the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Good up thyself now like a man. Show thyself a what? A man. Keep them laws, statutes, commandments, judgment, testimonies. Keep my laws. <laughs> that he's talking about. You children of Israel. Keep my laws. Will thou condemn me? The most I say what? Will you condemn me? Keep my laws. That thou mayest be righteous. You see that? You're going, you're going to speak against me. Speak against God. God forsake me. You see that? We say all manner of stuff. And expect me to what? Change my opinion? The most I say my opinion will not change. Keep my laws, that is commandments. You repent, forsake your sins, and return to me. The most I say, will thou condemn me? Why? Because my ways are not your ways. The most I say, I will punish you. That thou mayest be righteous. You're going to, be, you're going to, be going to condemn my, me for giving you laws, that is commandments. To what? Justify yourself? In other words, that's what the most I say. No. You're going to condemn me that thou mayest be righteous? To make yourself appear righteous? No. Or law keeping? I'm a good man. I'm a good woman. I'm a good person. No. The most I say, keep my laws. I give you statutes, commandments, laws, and judgment and testimonies for your good. Do them. Has thou an arm like God? He said, what, Job? You have an arm like me? You have power like me or authority like me? He said, yes, you turn up Israel. The most I say, do you have a power and authority like him? He said, no. No, you don't. Keep the charge. Show yourself a man. Good up your loins. That's what he said. Be a man and keep the commandments. That's what he said. Because what? He said, you know what? You're being boys and you're being girls by running away from the laws. You're running away from your responsibility. <laughs> the most I say. Your responsibility to, to me, to the most I say, your, your responsibility to me, you're, you're forsaking it. Has thou an arm like God? Or canst thou thunder with a voice like him? Moses say, You have power like me? No. Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency. 
array thyself with glory and beauty. The Lord's statutes, commandments, and judgment. That's your majesty. That's your excellence. That's your beauty and your glory, your power. That was the most I telling each one of Israel, the Israelites. Yeah, you see that? Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency. Array thyself with glory and beauty. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath. And behold, everyone that is proud and abase him. You see that? Everyone that is what? Proud. Pride. Full of pride. And abase him. Abase that person. You pay attention. You see? Pay attention. You see, everyone that is what? Proud, abase him, abase him. Look on every one that is proud and bring him low and tread down the wicked in their place. This is not proud man is what? Wicked. That we say, call them what? Wicked. You're full of pride, you say you're wicked and abase you. You're going to be abased. <laughs> Hide them in the dust together and bind their faces in secret. Then will I also confess unto thee that thine own right hand can save thee. You see that the most I say, when you could shut down the proud, Shut down the prideful, shut down the witchy cook, we create a what? Wicked or arrogant or sinner that we say in what? The most I said, then I won't write, I could say, then you could save yourself. But could you stop that? Could you stop pride? No, the most I say, no. Pay attention. Go on, um, read Zechariah 4 and 6. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Zechariah chapter 4 and 6. Then answer that. And then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. The most I say, by what? By my spirit, I will be able to shut down the proud. The, I will shut down the proud and the, 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 the wicked, to bring them what? Low. To abase them. By the laws, the laws of God. He said, that No force, no, no, no use of force. He said, Most I say, that verse 9 said, Has thou an arm like God? Or can thou thunder with a voice like me? You see that? Most I say, I have the power to shut down pride. The prideful and the arrogant. Go to Isaiah 3. I read in 1 through 16. Isaiah chapter 3 and 1 to 16. For behold, the Lord the Lord of hosts doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. The most I said, I want to take all your, the, 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 the livelihood, you see that? All the, the um, nice life from the children of Israel. You're going to cast into captivity. You're going to take it on from your high, high, <laughs> your high place or your high stature. The mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient. Are we talking about? We are going to sack our land. That's MTAD. Sack it. You sack it on the Babylon. You sack it on the Rome. You say what? I'm going to take you down. The mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient. He say everybody going into captivity. I'm going to scatter everybody from my land. The captain of fifty and the honourable man and the counsellor and the cunning artificer and the eloquent orator, and I will give children to be their princes. And babes shall rule over them. The most I say, what? I will scatter you into captivity. And in your captivity, children will be ruling over you. You see those young, arrogant ones. You see that? Young and arrogant yourself. You see what? Because the most I say, I'm telling you, children, who you are. The young and the arrogant, they're going to be dominating. They're going to be speaking to you with arrogance and pride. Full of pride. You see that? And looking at you like you're stupid. But who's doing it? The most I is doing it. The most I say, I will punish all them behind. The what? The eloquent, and you see that? And the prudent, and the ancient men, those young, Rude, you see that rude babes who are going to what? We proud, we even sell pride and arrogant over them. The most I say, yeah, for your own, your own violation of my law. And what? And the people, the, the, the what? And the people shall be oppressed, everyone by another. The most I say, I'm going to bring you, what? Everyone by another. I'm going to make you oppress each other in, in all the communities where you live in. Pay, pay attention. Everyone by another, and everyone by his neighbor. By who? His neighbor. Your neighbor setting up somebody to come and rob you. You pay attention. <laughs> and everyone by his neighbor and chi the child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient he said these young arrogant ones he said we call them young guns they're young and full of arrogance and full of pride full of pride they're going to behave themselves what? proudly with pride against the ancient the, the ancient you see that? and the base against the honorable so he said these young ones will behave themselves proud, proud, pride, pridefully and arrogantly they are the base men in society because the Mosai has flipped the script on the children of Israel. Scattering captivity, into captivity and have the word. The base man <laughs> of the society being, is being arrogant over you. You see that? The base against the honorable man. You pay attention. When a man shall take hold of his brother, of the house of his father, saying, Thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler, and let this ruin be under thy hand. You see what? So the man who has, you see that? They're looking at men in stature, who have position, who have money. You rule with. Is that what we say? Not men who have the, the wisdom. Not men who have the what? Understanding. Ancient men. 
You see that? Uh, uh, eloquent orators, the men, no, no, the men, they're looking for who have wealth and power. You rule me. You see that? You have money. You rule me. In that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be an healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people. The, for Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen, because their tongue, their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory, because of pride. That's what the most I say, pride. That take you down, that sack you from your homeland. Chase you to whom you see that? Because of pride. The show of their countenance does witness against them. The countenance, you see that? The face. Full of arrogance. Pride. What are you talking about? The, the, the countenance. The show of the countenance. They walk with haught, haughtiness. And they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. The Israelites. You see what? They declare their sin as what? Sodom. As, as they were doing in Sodom and Gomorrah, so they're doing in the captivity. The Moses said, declare their sin as Sodom. And they hide it not. They ain't hiding no more. I hold the closet. Woe unto their soul. The, the most I said, destruction unto their soul, the children of Israel, because of pride. Destruction unto their soul. I will destroy your soul because of pride. You have your, you show you, you declare your sin as Sodom and you hide it not. Most I say, open with it. You overvote. For they have rewarded evil unto themselves because they destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for the same pride. Are we talking about? Most I say, destroy, destroying is the same way here. They have what? Rewarded evil unto themselves. Say to the righteous that it shall be well with him. You see that? Sorry, say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him here, yeah. for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. The most I say, what? It's not going to be well with the right, but it's sorry, it's going to be well with the righteous, but not with the, the prideful. You see that the ones who declare the sin of Sodom and they hide it not. But to the righteous, it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. It's as you do, you're going to benefit. You see that if you do righteousness, if you keep the law, I'm, I'm going to reward it accordingly. If you violate the law, I'm going to reward you accordingly. That was most I say. Warn to the wicked. So you see that it could be well with the righteous, but destruction to the wicked. You see that? Who declared us in a Sodom because of pride. You see what? Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him. So it's not, it's, with most I say he called you wicked. When you have that spirit of pride, he says wicked or evil or sin. It shall be ill with him. For the reward of his hand shall be given him. I'm going to put it to death. That's what most I says. What? Because verse 9 says what? Woe unto their soul. Because why? They declare their sin as Sodom, they hide it not. Woe unto their soul. I'm going to destroy their soul. Woe means what? Destruction. Woe means destruction. Go to Hosea. Hosea chapter is that the one in one Hosea chapter seven and thirty. Woe unto them, for they have fled from me. Destruction unto them, because they have transgressed against me. You see that? The most I say what? Woe means what? Destruction. Woe means destruction. So go back to Isaiah three and verse nine. Woe unto their soul, destruction unto their soul, because of what they did. See that? That's Sodom, Sodom lifestyle. He said they declared the sin of Sodom. Destruction unto their soul. For they, for they have for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. The most I say, you call it evil unto themselves because of pride. Being prideful and arrogant. Say to the righteous that it shall be well with him, verse 10, and they shall eat the fruit of their doing. So if you do keep the laws, they'll be well with you. But verse 11, woe unto the wicked. You see that? If you violate the laws, destruction to you. It shall be ill with him. Destruction to you. Now the Moses says, For the reward of his hand shall be given him. As you do, I'm going to reward it justifiably or equitably. As for my people, children are the oppressors and women rule over them. The most I say, the children of Israel, the children, the, the babes, they see these babes, what? Or these what? Base men that be even proudly, <laughs> be even themselves proudly according to verse 5. Babes shall rule over them. Isaiah 3 and 4, and you see what? And the child shall be even so proud against the ancient, the base against the honorable. These what? As for my people, verse 12, children of the oppressors, the base men in the society, or these young ones, these, these young ones, you see that? They are what? Your oppressors, and women rule over them. You see that? And as the young youths oppressing your neighborhoods throughout the diaspora, that we're talking about, oppressing you with, with, with weapons. You see that? With what? Women going to be ruling over them. You see that? These single. House, single family household, women, women ruling over them, the male. They cannot get the male and all. They cannot teach them manliness. They cannot teach them to be what? First Kings 2. They cannot teach them to be what? To show themselves a man. First Kings 2 and 2. I, David instruction to Solomon, King Solomon, I go the way of all the earth. I am about to die. He say what? Be thou strong therefore and show thyself a man. To do what? Show yourself a man. How? And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgment and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest. That's how you're going to prosper. You see, you see, show yourself a man. Isaiah 3, 
and verse 12, as for my people, children are the oppressors. They see that the, the basemen oppressing the behind, the children oppressing the behind, young guns, and women rule over them because they see that women cannot teach them to be, show them to show themselves a man. They see that impossible. They need a man in the household to lead them. And we're talking about they're going to have what effeminate traits. That's what he's talking about. You need to sit down and listen to your mother, your mother on the phone. You see what your girlfriend talking, talking, girly talk, gossip talk. Is that and what they were the trend recording the record the male child recording he emulating you because he don't have a male figure to emulate that's all he's talking about he doesn't have a male figure to emulate so to that to show him to, to take the charge take the charge you see that to be the captain of the ship as i go up see my father do you see that one captain on the ship straight up <laughs> you know it is what time it is two men not kind of in one hole as do. one captain on the ship show yourself a man so you see that and you're going to emulate you see that that's power so that we say women gonna rule over them, gonna effeminize them in. That's what he's talking about. They're gonna follow the traits as the mother, as the sea. They follow. Oh my people, they will slay the cause of the air and destroy the, the, the way of thy path. You see that? Because they're gonna destroy the way, they're not gonna make them masculine to become what? Show themselves as men, to be men of the Lord. That's what he's talking about. So that was that's the result, the end result of the single parent household. You see that? The men leaving the woman going, or the woman chasing the men of the house, either way, whichever way it goes. You see that? Through some of maybe the men's wickedness or whatever vice versa. As for my people, children are the oppressors and women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err and destroy the, the way of thy path. The Lord standeth up to, to plead and standeth to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people and the princes thereof. For you have eaten up the vineyard and the spoil of the poor is in your houses. That's what the most I say. I'm going to enter into what? Judgment with the children of Israel. Moreover, the Lord said, because the daughters of Zion are haughty. They are what? Haughty. Full of pride. <laughs> they are full of pride. 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 And walk with stretch forth next. Pride. Pride. There we're talking about. The most uh, describing the children of Israel in this book. And wanton eyes. You see that? Walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. You see, click at the clock. Click at the clock. Click at the clock and head up and full of pride. That's what the most says. The streets. It's all part of our, the curses. The, uh, the captivity of the children. From being what? Humble from being shamefaced, they become what prideful. Now the Moses says, "That's part of the curses, scattered uh, curses upon the children of Israel, Israelites of God." Go to Daniel chapter four. I read in ten now. Daniel chapter four and verse ten now. Daniel four and ten. Thus were the visions of mine head in my bed. I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. The tree grew and was strong, and the height they are of reach unto heaven. You see that? So when he keep talking about tree, what is he talking about? Go to Ezekiel 31. <laughs> Go to Ezekiel chapter 31. Ezekiel chapter 31 and verse... Ezekiel 31 and 3. Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon. The what? The Assyrian king, national kingdom was a cedar in Lebanon. He's, uh, he's comparing the Assyrians to a tree, a, a cedar tree. With fair branches and with a shadowing shroud, and of a high stature, and his top was among the thick boughs. His what campaign the people as trees. That's what he's establishing there. Therefore, his height was exalted above all the trees of the field, above all the, the other trees. Is it too? Let's keep reading. Jump to verse. Keep reading. Therefore, his height was exalted above all the trees of the field, and his boughs were multiplied, and his branches became long because of the multitude of waters when he shot forth. All the fowls of heaven made their nests in his boughs, and under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young. And under his shadow dwelt all great nations. Dwelt, dwelt what? All great nations. Meaning what he had dominion over all the nations. He was the Syrian Empire ruling, ruling at that time. That we're talking about. He was so he's comparing them to trees, men to trees. The cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his boughs, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches. And any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. You see that? No, sorry, no any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. He said, no other tree um, was comparable to him, a um, man, man. I have made him fear by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden, all the what? The trees in the garden of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. You see that? Could a tree envy somebody? It's a man, man, the tree envied him. You see that? Go to um, Mark 8 verse 24. Mark chapter 8 verse 24. Mark 8 and 24. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. I see what? 
men as trees walking i think men as trees walking you see that go to judges chapter 9 judges chapter 9 Judges 9 and verse 8. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. They see that? The trees went forth to what? Anoint a king over them. So it's men. When he dealt with trees, it's men. It's referring to men. And they said unto the olive tree, Reign thou over us. They see that? So it's the, talking about men. But the fig tree said unto them, Should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and go to, the, to be promoted over the trees? To be what? Promoted over the trees. Then said the trees unto the vine, Come thou and reign over us. You see that? He's talking about this man. He's talking about men. The similitude and metaphors. Go back to Daniel 4 and verse 11 and 10. And I saw, behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. You see that? The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, and the side thereof to the end of all the earth. The leaves thereof were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and it, for it was meat for all. And the beasts of the field, and the shadow under it, and the fowls of heaven dwelt in the boughs thereof, and all flesh were fed of it. And I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven, an angel. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree. Do what? Hew down the tree. And cut off his branches. He said, destroy the tree. And what? Cut off his branches. Shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit. You see that? The similitude metaphors. You see that? You're going to see what? Scatter the fruit. It's talking about take down somebody. Take down a kingdom. It's talking about taking down a kingdom. He was talking about the Syrians before. So take down this kingdom. He said, cut them down. Heal that tree down. Cut it and scatter his branches and shake off his leaves and scatter his fruits. Scatter them. Let the bees get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. All you conquer. He said, let him go. Nevertheless, leave the stumps of his root in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass. He said, that leave the stump in the tender grass of the field and let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let his portion be the beast in the grass of the earth. Of the earth. Let his heart be changed from a man's heart, and sorry, let his heart, his mind, be changed from man's. From what? From man. So let's talk about that tree's out. A man. A man. You see that from a man, and let a beast's heart be given unto him. Let him turn to a what? A real animal. A beast. A, you're going to say a beast's heart? A real cruel, a cruel animal heart. You see that? So from compassion to compassionless. Because when, when you have dominion, you have still have compassion, let a judge accordingly. Most of, because the most are ruling what? The kingdom of men. Moses, the king's goes of um, Proverbs 21 and 1. Proverbs 21, verse 1. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. You see that? As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. That's what he's saying. Because when he's in rulership, he has to judge according to the law. Because the Moses who directed him. So he's still at our compassion and judge. You see that? So what, when the Moses said, when I take you down, you're going to get turned to a beast. Just wicked. That's what he's talking about. Just plain wicked. Let his heart, his mind, be changed from a man's. We see that to be able to judge for a wide rulership, to judge equitably. And let a beast heart be given unto him. You see that? He ain't about no equity, equity no more. And let seven times pass over him. This matter is decreed by the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones. To the intent that the living may know, we upon earth may know, that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will, and set it up over it the basis of men. So who is this tree he talking about? Base men. These base kingdoms that ruling on the earth. Pay attention. You see that? These are called Assyrian, Medo-Persian, Greek. You see that? Babylonian, Roman Empire. He's talking about that. He's talking about set it up the basis of men going to be ruling on this earth. Basis of men. <laughs> Pay attention. Ecclesiastes, go to Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Ecclesiastes 10 and 6. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 6. Folly is set in great dignity, and the rich sit in low places. The Israelites, the children of God, are in captivity or conquered in the earth. They do in low places. I have seen servants upon horses, horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. You see that? Servants upon horses, the base men in rulership. You see that? And the, 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 the kings of the earth or the princes of the earth in captivity. Daniel 4 17. And what? This matter is by the decree of the watchers, the angels, and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know, men may know, that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it, it to whomsoever he will, and set it up over it the basis of men. You see that? You see that? Servants upon horses. Servants ruling over you, children of Israel. That we're talking about. This dream my king Nebuchadnezzar have seen, now thou, O Belshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof. 
He said, um, tell me what I mean, Daniel. Tell me what I mean. Uh, as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation, but thou art able, for the spirit of the Holy God is in thee. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, so they called Daniel Belteshazzar, was astonished for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hear thee, and the interpre interpretation thereof to thine enemies. The tree that thou sowest, which grew, and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth, whose, whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt upon, whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation, it is thou, O king. It is who? Thou, O king, you. <laughs> that we say, so that we're talking about the tree? You are the tree. That we're talking about you are the tree. Nebuchadnezzar. It is thou, O king, that art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is, is grown. You see that you become a, a kingdom. The most I put you as a basis of man to rule over this earth. That we're talking about. The, the kingdom of the, of the, um, the Babylonian, Babylonian Empire. For thy greatness is grown and reacheth unto heaven, and thy dominion to the end of the earth. You conquered everything. You see that all these fowls under the tree, and these beasts under the trees, the, the, the other countries of the earth that you, you, you conquer. And whereas the king saw, a watcher and an holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the root thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender of the grass of the field, in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field, till seven times pass over. This is the interpretation, O king. And this is the decree of the Mosai, which has come upon my Lord the King. He says, So the Mosai what? I set, up, I set him up, I set up Nebuchadnezzar, and I'm going to take him down. Let me say, come on what? Again, it's come upon the, my Lord the King. That's the most I decree. That they shall drive thee from men. That they shall what? Drive thee from men. Your kingdom is coming down. You see, I exalt you, I set you up, but you are coming down. So everything is a, for a point of time. Everything on this earth is for a point of time. Babylon ruling over you, for a point of time. You, can, you see that? Captivate, capturing the children of Israel and enslaving them, for an appointed time. You see that? Metaphorism, for an appointed time. The Greek? For an appointed time. Roman Empire, for an appointed time. That's the most I say. But what? That the, what? That they shall drive thee from men. They shall what? Drive thee from men. Take your kingdom out. And thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. And they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. And they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven. And seven times shall pass over thee. Till thou know that the most I ruleth in the kingdom of men. And giveth it to whomsoever he will. You see that? The most I say, well, from, I'll take it from all our rulership and pride of conk as as a conqueror of the whole earth and make it what? Base as a beast, a natural animal. Nobody will ever talk about you no more. I will decimate you and abase you. That's what the Mosai say. He that is proud, abase. That's what Joe 40 was talking about. Abase you. You see that? And whereas they, com they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, you see that? Where they commanded to what? Leave the stump of the tree roots. Thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. After that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. You see that? But your kingdom go what? Sure. But then I will take you off. Wherever O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness. You see that? He says, stop violating, stop being prideful and arrogant. You see that? And thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. You see that? Be merciful. If it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of the twelve months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have, I have built for the house of the king, um, kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? You see that? While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. You see that? The most I say because he exalted itself in pride and arrogancy. I build this and my, my kingdom and I get The most I say, your kingdom is taken from thee, departed from thee. 32. And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the most I rule it in the kingdom of men, and give it to whomsoever he will. So the most I say, what? I'm bringing the meat again to you behind. The Medo-Persian Empire, come and conquer it. Because of what? That's what he did in verse 30. The king speak and said, Is not this great Babylon? And I have built that what? That I have built, I Nebuchadnezzar have built. For the house of the kingdom of by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty, he said, What well, I build this empire 
I conquered this earth without with the army. This is my doing. You see that? The Mosai said, while the word was in the king's mouth, while he was talking, there fell a voice from heaven saying, the Mosai, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. This is my decree to you. The kingdom has departed from thee. The Mosai said, you're done. Because of what? Pride. 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 Pay attention. <laughs> Keep reading. Jump to verse 33. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven. Till his hairs were grown like eagle's feathers. And his nails like bright claws, like bird's claws, sorry. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. I got mine understanding returned unto me. Which means he lose his mind <laughs> to make a statement like that that I rule in this earth and I set up this kingdom as they what? As the rulers in this fourth beast kingdom are doing now, we are doing this and we are doing that and we are doing that. The most I say, what? I'm about to take you down. You pay attention because of pride. Pay attention. And he what? He said, my understanding return. He catch, he catch back his head. Because you're out of his skull when you're making them comments, the Most High say. And I bless the Most High. So unless you bow down to the Most High, you see that? And I praise and honor him and li that live it forever. Whose dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He said, all the inhabitants of the earth are what? Not as nothing to the Most High. They're reputed as what? Nothing. And he do it according to his will in the army of heaven. In the what? In the army of heaven. Because the army of the Lord is in heaven. The holy angels. <laughs> Pay attention. He do it what he want. According to his will. I am the one directing everything on this earth. Nobody's doing nothing on the earth. See that? Full of pride. Violating my laws. You see that? And condoning sin and transgression. And, 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 and talking about you doing. You doing. You're doing nothing. The most I in charge of all. And the, this what, when they, the most I had enough. I'm taking you out. Pay attention. That way it's imperative you turn every you repent and return to your Lord. That's what the most I say, I will plant my my spirit, my laws in their mind, right in the spirit. Pay attention. Verse 36. At the same time, my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and brightness returned unto me, and my counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I Nebuchadnezzar praise and extort and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth. And his ways judgment. Is what? The most high ways judgment. And those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. Those that what? Walk in pride, he is able to abase. Who have a prideful spirit, he is able to what? Abase them. You walk in pride, he go abase you. You see that? Go back to Job 40 and verse 11. What did the most high say? Verse, read verse 10 and 11. Job 40, 10 and 11. The most high said to God. 9, verse 9. Has thou an arm like God? The most I said to Job, you have an arm like me? You children of Israel, you Israelites scattered in the diaspora? The most I said, you have an arm like me? You have power like me? Authority like me? No. Or canst thou thunder with a voice like, like him? Like me? Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency. The most I said, return to my Lord. Repent and come back and take your, your, your place, your place, your rightful place as rulers, rulership, as kings and queens. You see that? As royalty on this earth. The most I said, deck thyself with excellency and array thyself with glory and beauty. You see that? Come back to my Lord, start with commandments and judgment. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath, and behold everyone that is proud and abased. And the most I say, you do what? You abase them. You see that? He's saying what? You're so arrogant and proudful. You abase somebody. Show me your power. Look on everyone that is proud and bring him low. You show me a, a, a man, you see that? And bring down bring down the, the, ruler, the rulership or the, your, the power that's dominating you on this earth. You see that? The wicked that is oppressing you on this earth. The most I say, you bring him down. <laughs> you bring him down. You see that? Look on everyone that is proud and bring him low. You bring him down and tread on the wicked in their place. You tread him down. The oppressor that fought beast kingdom and oppressing you behind a conquer you. He must say, you do it. That's what he's telling because of pride. Go back to um, Daniel 4 and verse 37. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, the Most High. All whose works are truth and his ways judgment. And those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. Only the Most High could, could abase the prideful or the ones who pride. I'm gonna, and he said, I will take it off. But we said in the, the, the turn of Israel, you can't do it. You have to repent and come back to my Lord. You can't do it yourself. You have to, you have to yourself have to stop being prideful and arrogant and submit to me. I will take them out. That's my job. You see that? Because my ways are what? Judgment. And those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. I am able to abase them. I will take you down. That's what the most I says. But the Second Chronicles chapter 32, I read verse 1. Second Chronicles 32, I read in verse 1 now. Second Chronicles 32 and 1. After these things said the, sorry, after these things, 
and the establishment thereof, Seneca, the king of Assyria, came and entered into Judah and encamped against the French cities and taught to win them for himself. So he tried to conquer Judah. And when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib was come, and that he was purposed to fight against Jerusalem, he took counsel with his princes and his mighty men to stop the waters of the fountains, which were without the city, and they did help him. So there were gathered much people together who stopped all the fountains and the brook that ran through the midst of sorry, that ran through the midst of the land, saying, Why should the king of Assyria come and find much water? So they're saying what? You're gonna stop them from coming when they come, they'll have water to drink, to, 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 to replenish the army. You see, to hydrate the army. So the city of what? They dive with the water. Dive it away from them. Also he strengthened himself and built up the wall that was broken and raised up the towers and another wall without. And so he built an exterior wall. And repaired Milo in the city of David and made darts and sheaves in abundance. So he was preparing for war. And he set captains of war over the people and gathered them together to him in the street of the gate of the city and spake comfortably to them saying, Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid, nor dismayed for the king of Assyria. Don't fear them, nor for all the multitude that is with him. Don't fear the vast army, for they be more with us than with them, with him. Be pay attention. You see that? Hezekiah said what? They be what? They be more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battle. You see that? What is um, um Elisha say in Second Kings six sixteen? Same thing. You see that? Same thing he said to um, 2 Kings 6, 16, to Gehazi. 2 Kings 6 and 17, 16. And he, answered and, and he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. You see that? The, the army of who? The Syrians. The Syria, when the Syrian king was warning them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha, the army of the Lord. You see that? The heavenly angels, the army of the Lord. Go back to Second Chronicles 32 and verse 6, 7. Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria. He said, don't fear the king of Assyria. Nor, nor for all the multitude that is with him. The same thing that Elisha tells Gehazi. For they, they that be, so for they be more with us than with him. Our army is bigger than his that you see in there. With him is an arm of flesh. They are physical, mere mortal men. You see that? But with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. He said, the Most High God is with us. He said, so the army of the Lord is with us. Once you keep in the law, statutes, and commandments. You see what? And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. You see that? So they take solace. Jump to verse 20. And for this cause, Hezekiah the king and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, prayed and cried to heaven. And the Lord sent an angel, which cut off all the mighty men of valor, you see, and, the, and the leaders and the captains in the camp of the king of Assyria. You see that? So the most I send the army to decimate them and take them out. Good to good. Protect your children of Israel. So you can't walk in pride. The most I say, you all can't walk in pride. They're humble and come to me. And I will, do, I will take out the, the prideful. So he returned with shame of face to his own land. And when he was coming to the house of his God, they that came forth of his own bowels slew him there with a the sword. His, his sons killed him. <laughs> his sons put him to death. His sons, his own sons put him to death. His own sons. Keep reading. Thus said the Lord, Thus the Lord save Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, and from the hand of all other, and guided them on every side. And many brought gifts unto the Lord to Jerusalem, and presents to Hezekiah, king of Judah. So that he was magnified in the sight of all nations from thenceforth. In those days Hezekiah was sick to the death, and prayed unto the Lord, and he spake unto him, and he gave him a sign. But Hezekiah rendered not again according to the benefit done unto him, for his heart was lifted up. His heart was what? Lifted up. Therefore there was wrath upon him. His, when he become prideful, you see that? Lifted up means what? Full of pride or arrogance or haughty. You see that? His heart was what? Lifted up, therefore there was wrath upon him. So when he get the spirit of pride, the most like mad, angry. You see that? There was wrath upon him and upon Judah and Jerusalem. So when he get pride, the most like mad with you. You need to humble. Notwithstanding, Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart. You see that? He did what? <laughs> when he realized the most high against him, he did what? He humbled himself for the pride of his heart, his mind. Prideful mind. That we're talking about. He did what? Humble himself. When he was like, when he was like, when he, when he understand the most high set eyes on you. Most I say, what? Shut that down. You see that? For the pride of his heart. 
both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord came not upon them in the days of Hezekiah. So you have to humble yourself, get a humble spirit, a shame-faced spirit. Shut it down. Now we say what? Otherwise, the most I will come against you. It, go to Psalms chapter 10 and verse 2. So if you're arrogant, prideful, haughty, most I say what? I'm against you. Psalm chapter 10, verse 2. The wicked in his pride don't persecute the poor. The what? The wicked in his pride. So that prideful man is as a wicked. You call him a wicked, a wicked person, a wicked spirit, or sinful spirit. Don't persecute the poor. They're going to persecute the righteous or the humble. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. You see that? The most I said, let them be what? Taken in the devices, whatever you plan, take him out. For the wicked boasted of his heart's desire, his own mind, his wishes, his pleasures, and blessed the covetous, whom the Lord abhorred. You see that? He's going to exalt and, you see that? Big up the, the covetous man. But what? Persecute the poor. And the most I, what? Abhor or hate the covetous man. Pay attention. <laughs> He's going to bless the man, the covetous man, who the most I hate. Most I say, hate the covetous man. For the wicked boasted of his heart's desire, his mind, or his, 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 his own pleasures, or his own wishes, and blessed the covetous. You see that? He's going to what? Exalt the covetous man. Whom the Lord abhorred. That covetous man, the most I hate him. The most I say, abhor means hate? Yes. You see that? Go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter... Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 3. For this you know that no homonger, no unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater had an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and, and of God. So if you have to select that covetous man is an idolater. The covetous man is an idolater. He's a missile idolatry. Most I say, he had no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. No inheritance. Go back to Psalms 10 and verse 3. For the wicked boasted of the, his heart's desire and blessed the covetous whom the Lord abhorred. Both I say because you have no inheritance in my kingdom. Once you have a covetous spirit. The wicked through the pride of his countenance. The wicked through what? The pride. Pride again of his countenance, appearance, his face. You see that appearance? Will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts because he's arrogant. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above, out, out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he profited them. You see that? He had said in his heart, I shall not be moved. I what? I shall not be moved. For I shall never be in adversity. He's arrogant. Arrogance and proud, prideful. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. He's what? De full of deceit and fraud. Pay attention. That proud, prideful spirit. Is that what you say? Isaiah, Isaiah is talking about? The base going to be, be, behave themselves proudly against the innocent. Isaiah 3 and 5. And the people shall be oppressed, everyone by another, and everyone by his neighbor. And the child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. You see that? This young, arrogant. You see that? Young, arrogant. Israelite. Young, you see that? Young guns. <laughs> the most I say to behave the base men and be even proudly against the honorable. Why? Psalms 10 and verse 7. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. And his, under his tongue is mischief and vanity. You see that? But, but, because you're going to what? Bless the covetous. And you have a deceitful spirit and a fraudulent spirit. He set out in the lurking places of the villages, in the secret places that he murdered the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. You see that? He's going to watch, watch, and lay wait for you. Lay wait for you. Go to Psalms 36 and verse 11. Psalms 36, verse 11. Psalms 36 and 11. Let not the foot of pride come against me. And let not the hand of the wicked remove me. So the prideful spirit is a wicked man or sinner. That we talking about. Once you have a spirit of pride on you, it's a wicked spirit. <laughs> That's what he's establishing here. A wicked spirit. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 13. Proverbs 8 and verse 13. Proverbs 8 and 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. The fear of the Lord. When you fear God, is to hate evil. You see that? Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the fraud mouth do I hate. The most I say I hate that. I hate pride. I hate arrogancy and the evil way and a fraud mouth. You see that? You see that? You say haughtiness, arrogance. The most I say what? I hate those things. I hate those things. Read um, Proverbs 16, 18. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18. 16 verse 18. Pride God before destruction 
and an haughty spirit before fall. You see, that's when you have the spirit of pride. The most I say, what? Destruction. Thing. That's why he say, woe unto you. Because they're going in the way of Sodom. You see that? They hide it, they hide it not. They declare the sin of Sodom and they hide it not. Woe unto them. That we're talking about pride. What before destruction? I'm going to destroy them. Destroy it on. Once you have that spirit and a haughty spirit before fall. Because once you have that haughty or prideful spirit, the most I say, I will take you down. You say, might? He said, pride go before destruction. Destruction is coming. And a haughty spirit before fall. Your fall is coming. Once you continue that spirit, you say, what? It is coming. It is coming. That's what he said. Go to Pro Proverbs chapter 29, verse 23. Proverbs 29, verse 23. Proverbs 29, 23. A man's pride shall bring him low. What? A man's pride, arrogance, shall bring him low. You see, pay attention. But honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Honor shall uphold who? The one who humble in spirit. You see that you have a humble spirit. Me. Go to Isaiah 16 and verse 6. Isaiah chapter 16, verse 6. Isaiah 16 and 6. We have heard of the pride of Moab. Of the who? The pride of Moab. He is very proud. Even of his haughtiness and his pride and his wrath. But his lies shall not be so. You see that the most I say? Moab. You see that? Them turn a lot. Moab, you see, Moses, I say, pride. You hear the pride? You're very proud. You're very proud. Most I say, yeah. Even though it's hot, you're very haughty. The most I say, yeah, but I'm going to bring you low. I'm going to bring, destroy you the same way. The most I say, is the most I, most I, the Bible is the same way. Saying, we have heard of the pride of Moab. He's very, very proud. Even of his haughtiness and his pride. Most I say it twice. He's pride, proud, haughty, pride in one verse. You see that? And his wrath. But his lies shall not be so. The most I say, what? I'm going to take Moab out. The children of Lot. Go to um, Mark chapter 7 and read verse 1 down. Mark 7 and read verse 1 down. Mark 7 and 1. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defile, that is to say, with unwashed, unwashing hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands, often eat not. Holding the tradition of the elders, so they both were watching at Yahushua and his disciples. You see that saying? Oh, they eating food without washing their hands. You see that they find fault with them. They have a problem with that. Because what? For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands, they eat not. Often they eat not. They ain't eating nothing. They have to wash, wash your hand. Wash your hand. Wash your hand. Wash your hand. Let me tell you. I was say, you may clean the outside of the, the cup. But if inside the full of extortion and fraud, they will be telling you, you're full of sin. Now we talking about, we say, what well, you're signing with washing your hand, and you're, you're taking a corn and, and eating it without washing your hand, and, and, and you, you're turning your nose at me and looking at me. You to pay attention. You say, well, fix this. You say, you're full of sin. Deceit. Craftiness. You say, what? <laughs> For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands, often, often they eat not. They ain't eating no food. You see, holding the traditional elders. Traditions. It's a tradition. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be. So you just say, when I come from the market, I'm hungry, if, if I forget to wash my hands, so what? And I eat, that's what he's saying. If I forget to wash my hand and I eat the food, that's not going to kill me. That's what he's saying. You're not trying to be nasty. That's not what he's saying. He said, if I forget, <laughs> it's no big deal. In the up, you're still going, you, 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 wash, you use caution because there's toxic, there's toxins out there. There's toxic stuff. You wash your hand. That's what he's saying. But he's saying what? Don't condemn me and don't look at me if you see me <laughs> do it. That's what he's saying. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things they be. Many other traditions they have, which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots and basin vessels and on tables. So they wash, wash everything, wash everything. See that? Superficial. <laughs> Superficial. Everything looks shiny and clean. Nice, nice, clean house, clean. Not, not saying to be nasty. That's not what we're talking about. But you see, man, you're focusing on that, and this is full of filth. You're wicked as hell here. That we're talking about. You're sinful, evil. That we're talking about here. Fix that. You say, repent, confess, and keep the laws. That we're talking about. Don't worry about that. <laughs> that is it. That's second nature. And what? Then the Pharisees and the scribes ask him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? So they come and challenge him. Why did not they, wash, they must wash their hand before they eat? I mean, you see that they come and ask in Yahusha. Why? He answered and said unto them, Well, had Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, he called them what? Hypocrites, these rulers over the nation, these vanguards, he called them hypocrites. As it is written, These people honor me with their lips. But their heart, their mind is far from me. See what? Lip service. Talk a good talk. Big show. <laughs> we say. Big show. But what? Their mind is far from me. You also say that their mind ain't with me. Why? How be it in vain do they worship me? He said what? 
In vain you are worshipping me. The Lord Moses said, yes. Because you're full of deceit, you're not fixing your mind. Appearing beautiful outward, but inside you're full of dead men bones. Sin. You see that? How be it in vain do they worship me? You see what? Because they're full of pride and arrogance. That's what he's talking about. How be it in vain do they worship me? Teaching for doctrines the commandment of men. They would not humble long to. Why they wouldn't humble long to Yeshua? Because he come from the ghetto. He didn't pay attention. He said, so prophets will come. Men of God will come to them. And why wouldn't they humble long to them? Because they're not from Judah. They said, pay attention. You know, where, where was Yeshua from? He was from um, Galilee. Yeah, he come from Galilee. Nazareth in Galilee. But he was of the seed of David. Pay attention. <laughs> they say, is there any good thing come from Galilee? Is there any good thing that come from Galilee, from the ghetto, from the hood? But he was of the seed of David. Pay attention. It's about this thing. He was not born in Jerusalem, so he's not from us. Pay attention. <laughs> Pay attention. The word of the Lord is saying what he's saying. He's doing for what? How be it in vain do they worship me? Teach him. That's why they were challenging him. That's why they were challenging him because he was not born in Jerusalem with them. He didn't go through Vanguard school. He didn't went through Pharisee school. He said he was not of the aristocrats. You see that? Who is he? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm born I, 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 I'm from Galilee, but my, my lineage is, is David. Pay attention. We see him keeping it. For laying aside the commandments of God, you hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such slight things you do. That is saying. So they reject him because he was from the hood, from the ghetto. And he said unto them, Full well you reject the commandments of God, that you may keep your own tradition. You see what? That's why you what? They're going to reject the commandments of God to do or to keep their own tradition. For Moses, Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso cursed father or mother, let him die the dead. But you say, If a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Korban, that is to say it is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. So they're making traditions. You see that? So they're talking about doing they're giving um, the, the, the mother and the father benefiting from their status. That's what they tell so they be within the parents, that we say. And he suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which you have delivered. And many such like things you do. He said that you're nullifying the word of God by making up your own laws. He said that you're violating God's laws, in other words. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. He said, Listen unto me, and understand. There's nothing coming into a mouth of a man defile him. So the go to um, verse 21. For from within out of the heart of man, or the, the, heart, the mind of men proceed evil thoughts. You, thought, you think here, adulteries from here, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. So the spirit of pride is evil. As hell. That's what he's saying. What? That's evil as hell. The pride, all these evil things come from within and defile the man. So you will have a spirit of pride. He say evil as hell. The proud, haughty, arrogant, as evil spirit that we're talking about. And they're going to de defile you. Defile you. That's what we're going to establish there. That we're talking about. Go to um, 2nd Ezra chapter 8 and verse 50. 2nd Ezra chapter 8 verse 50. 2nd Ezra 8 and 50. For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world. In the what? In the latter time. Because they have walked in great pride. Because why? Great pride. Prideful, arrogant spirit. The most I say what? Many miseries go done to them. What? Woe going to be unto them. Destruction to them. If you don't repent and forsake your sins and humble the spirit. You see that? Humble the spirit. Second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 18. Chapter 15. Second Ezra 15 and 18. Second Ezra 15 18. Him. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, and the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. So when you have the prideful spirit, the most are going to bring you this, bring destruction. Verse sixteen, verse fourteen, second Ezra fifteen fourteen. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Destruction to the world and the, the inhabitants. For the sword and the destruction during night. And one people shall stand up to fight against another. The most I say, bringing what insurrection, <laughs> insurrection in in, in, in this, in this to take all this beast kingdom that we're talking about. We're in Daniel four. Most I say, I will bring it down. I'm bringing it down. For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. You see that they're going to be what? Invading one another. And they shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. They're in lockdown. The earth is in lockdown. We say you desire no freedom to travel as you wish as, as anymore. The most I say what is restriction. Restrictions and restrictions and restrictions. 
conditions and conditions. We don't meet them conditions. <laughs> you, 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 no, you're not going to fulfill his desire. I don't want. I, de- I want to go there. I want to go there. No, no. You, you have to do this. You have to do that. You have to do that. Stipulations for you to go there. It's a desire in. No. You must say, ain't happening. A man's a desire to go into a city. That we, as as, a, as you did once did in your luxury at your own behest. You see that? I'm going there on vacation. I'm going there on vacation. No. You have to do this. This. That. That. Stipulation. You know, because I say. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The what? Because of their pride, 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 this prideful for this kingdom. You see that? The most I say, their city shall be troubled. That's why I'm bringing the destruction reality in Daniel 4, with Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. Because he, he got the, the Daniel 4 37, when he spoke up, you see that? Because of their what? Their pride, the city shall be troubled. You see what? I do this. I, I establish this kingdom. And I make the, the, this land dominate the earth. And I have rulership. I do it. Most I say what? Because of what? Their pride. In the latter days, this four be kingdom of the train of Zola. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. Listen, then that most I say what? A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor and shall destroy the houses with a sword and shall spoil the goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. The most I say, yeah. Because of pride, behold, said God, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun and from the south and from the east and from Lebanon, to turn themselves one against another and to repay the things that they have done to them. Like as they do yet this day unto my chosen. It's all about the turn of Israel. You see that? To bring them out of deliverance. The most I say, I'm winding up this last beast kingdom. Turn them all against one another. They said, I'll take out Babylon, I'll take out the Medo Persian, I'll take out the Greeks, I'm coming to take out this fourth beast kingdom. The same with Moses, I say. Because of what? Pride. 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 I'm going to make them turn against one another to deliver my people Israel. Pay attention. The Israelites. Go to Sirach chapter 5, verse 3. Sirach chapter 5 and verse 3. Sirach 5 and 3. And say not, Who shall control me for my works? For the Lord will surely revenge thy pride. The most I what? Will revenge thy pride. Follow verse 2. Follow verse 1. Set not thy heart upon thy goods and say not, I have enough for my life. You see that? I did well. You see that? I'm saving for my retirement. You see that? The most I say what? I'm saving my nest egg for my retirement. The most I say what? Say not, I have enough for my life. I set for life. I set for my retirement. Follow not thine own mind and thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart. The most I not, most I not saying, put aside something. No, that's not what he's saying. No. He said, don't become prideful, arrogant with it. That's what he's saying. Say not, who shall control me for my works? For the Lord will surely revenge thy pride. He what? Revenge the pride. When you get arrogant, you become, you become pompous. You see that? Or proud about it. I did this and I have that and I have accomplished this. The most I say what? What? Say not, I have sinned. The most I say what? It's called sin. It's called sin. The most I will destroy you for the that same prideful spirit. Go to Sirach chapter 10 and verse 7. Sirach 10, I read in 7 through 21. Sirach 10 and 7. Pride is hateful before God and man. Pride is what? Pride is having pride and arrogant and haughty spirit is hateful before God and man. And by both that one commit iniquity. By what? Having a pride and prideful spirit, the most I say, you're committing sin. You're in the midst of sin. Pay attention. <laughs> Continue reading verse Sirach 10 and 8. Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is trans- translated from one people to another. Who, why is earth and ashes proud? Why is what? Earth and ashes proud. There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. You see that? Why is earth and ashes mean that from the man formed from the dust of the ground? That Genesis. Why is, he, you see what, um, why is earth and ashes proud? The, um, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image and likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fall of the air. So the, um, verse 27, So God created man in his own image, and, his, and the image of God created him. Male and female created he them. So he created man in his own image and likeness. Go to Genesis 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. That, that we're talking about. He formed man from what? The dust of the ground. So Acts chapter 10 and verse it verse 9 why is earth and ashes proud man we are formed from the dust of the ground why are you proud <laughs> who says it? what are you proud about i create you from dust and <laughs> from the dust there is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man so that what as earth and ashes is the man he referring to he said no not a more wicked thing than a covetous man who covered him for things of people of 
persons that don't belong to him, or people's property that don't belong to him. You see that? Coveting somebody's daughter, coveting somebody's property, his man servant, his maid servant, his axe, his money, his whatever. Moses said, there's not a much, a much, what, I'm going to quote it. This is, um, so actually what? There's not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. Most like God said, there's not a much more wicked thing than that. Having that kind of spirit. For such a one, because it's a pride spirit. It's a proud, arrogant spirit. You see that? I go get her. I go get him. I go get that. I go take his money. I go take, I go do what I want. It's a spirit of pride and arrogant. You see that those base men be even themselves proud against the ancient that we're talking about. You see that? For such a one set his soul to his own soul to sail. Because while he lived, he cast it away his bowels. This man said, Why? Wow, that's some serious stuff. We used to talk them thing back in the in the day. The physician cut it off a long disease. And he that is today a king, tomorrow shall die. The most I say, but because I exalt and I abase. I rule over all the kings of the earth. So you must most I say, you mean high and mighty one day, pride and proud full of full of grant and go abase it. I go bring you low. Pay attention. The, who is he that is a, today a king, tomorrow shall die. For, with, for when a man is dead, he shall inherit creeping things, beasts and wombs. The beginning of pride is when one departed from God. Is that? So when you still have the prideful spirit, the most I say what? You depart from me. The spirit of pride, arrogance and haughtiness is when you depart from me. It means what? You're in the midst of sin. You're, you're, you're worshipping the devil. You depart from me. Because you're supposed to be humble. And his heart is turned away from his maker. Your, your mind is turned away from me. So you turn to who? The devil. The spirit of pride is the spirit of Satan. Are we telling you? For pride is the beginning of sin. Is the what? Is the beginning of sin. In the midst of sin. And he that hath it shall pour out abomination. You see that you're going to talk, 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 talk. And what? Abominable things come out of your mouth. That we say talk. And therefore the Lord brought upon them strange calamities. And overthrew them utterly. The most I will take you out. The Lord had cast down the thrones of proud princes and set up the meek in their stead. The most I, that what Matthew 5 is talking about, the Hushua are talking about. Who can inherit the earth? Matthew chapter 5 and verse. Matthew 5 and verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Meek, the meek, the humble, going to inherit the earth. He said, they're going to get the kingdom. You have, have a humble spirit, not a prideful or arrogant spirit. The most I say, for. Um, Sirach 10 and 14, the Lord had cast down the thrones of proud princes and set up the meek in their stead. The both I say, what? I'm going to exalt and abase. The Lord had plucked up the roots of the proud nations and planted the lowly in their places. You see that? The Lord overthrew countries of the heathen and destroyed them to the foundations of the earth. You know what? Overthrew countries of the heathen. He took some of them away and destroyed them and had made their memorial to cease from the earth. He did what? Made their what? Memorial to cease from the earth. Pride was not made for men, nor furious anger for them that are born of a woman. Most of said, let me pray for men. But they that fear the Lord are a sure seed, and they that love him, an honorable plan. The meek, who are going to do as they tell you to do, and humble. They that regard not the law are a dishonorable seed. Pride, the prideful one. They hate the Lord. They, they see that? They're exalting themselves above the people. They that transgress the commandments are a deceivable seed. They're in the midst of violation of sin. Are what? A deceivable seed is full of pride. That's what the Mosai says. Among brethren, he that is chief is honorable. The chief one is what? Honorable. So are the they that fear the Lord in his eyes. The fear of the Lord goeth before the obtaining of authority. Uh, but roughness and pride is the losing thereof. You see that? Roughness, arrogance, and pride. You see that? Be even proudly <laughs> is the losing of authority. Must I say what? You've lost the, uh, the authority with me. Whether he be rich, noble, or poor, their glory is the, fear, is the fear of the Lord. It is not me to despise the poor man that had understanding. Don't hate the what? The poor man, the humble man that had what? Understanding. Wisdom. I've given him the, the understanding of the mysteries. You see that? The mysteries, the deep, dark sayings, the parables hidden in his book. The most I said, don't. It is, me to despise, it is not me to despise him. Don't hate him. Don't envy him. You see that? Humble the spirit and be taught. That's what he's saying. That had understanding. It, what, the, it is not me to despise the poor man that had understanding because I am dealing with him. The most I say, well, I am revealing things to him. So humble. That we say what? Philip. Go to the Ethiopian, you know, go and teach him. He said, understand me, you got to read it. He said, no, how can I accept someone guide me? Because the most of the Holy Spirit, a good angel, tell him, go, go, on, go, on, go and teach him. See that? That's how you tell Peter, go to Cornelius, pay attention. It is not me to despise the poor man that had understanding, because the most of the said, I give him understanding. Neither it is convenient to magnify a sinful man. To do what? Magnify a sinful man. That's my boy. You see that? So you magnify the boy doing wrong, 
wrong, wrong, but you can't do no wrong in your eyes. Because you're magnifying a sinful man, he's a midst of sin, evil. Great men and judges and potentates shall be honored. Yet is there none of them greater than he that feareth the Lord. Unto the servant that is wise shall they that are free do service. And he that had knowledge will not grudge when he is reformed. Be not overwise in doing thy business, and boast not thyself in the time of thy distress. Better is he that laboreth and aboundeth in all things, than he that boasteth himself and wanted bread. Than what? Boasteth, boasteth himself or prideful or arrogant or proud or haughty. You see that? And you're going to lack what bread. Most of you say what? You're going to lack bread because they're in the midst of sin. That what? Pride coming before fall. Pride is hateful. You see that? Pride, the beginning of pride is when one departed from God. You're in the midst of sin. For pride, the, for pride is the beginning of sin. In the midst of sin. <laughs> what most I said. Once they, they, they see that? They nurturing and nourishing that prideful spirit. What is Sirach chapter 16 and verse 8? Sirach 16 verse 8. Neither spared he the place where Lot sojourned. We'll read up from verse 1. Desire not a multitude of unprofitable children, neither delight in ungodly sons. You see that? Don't have desire <laughs> unprofitable children in the midst of the wicked children. If the wicked, they don't want to keep the laws. He said, what? Sever from them. Cut them off. Neither delight in the ungodly sons. Neither delight in what? Ungodly sons. In the midst of sin, they don't want to keep the laws. He said, they have no pleasure in them. Though they multiply, though they have children, so my grandchildren, my grandpapa, my grandpapa, you see that? If my grandpapa and that grandpapa, he loves you prettier, yeah, he prettier, yeah. The most I say what? Once they're in the midst of sin, they're ungodly sons, they don't want to keep them laws. You see that? Stay away from them. Though they multiply, them grand purpose, rejoice not in them. No, I say they take no pleasure in them. If the children are wicked, if your sons are God, your godly children, sons or daughters, do do want to keep the laws, don't rejoice in their grandchildren. We say the children innocent. The most I say, no, 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 no. Once the father and the mother in the midst of sin, you see that, or your son or your daughter, stay away from the children, stay away from them, stay away from the children. Though they multiply, rejoice not in them. Except the fear of the Lord be with them. Except the keeping the laws. Except the keeping the laws. That's the most I say. The only way we rejoice in them. Trust not thou in their life. Don't what? Trust not thou in their life. Neither respect their multitude. You see that? Don't respect them ungodly sons and daughters. Neither respect their what? Their offsprings. The multitude is the offsprings. Except they're keeping the law. You see that? If, the children, if your children keeping the law, then you have pleasure in your, in your grandchildren. That we're talking about. For one that is just is better than a thousand. The one that is keeping the law is better than what? A thousand that breaking the law. And better it is to die without children than to have them that are ungodly. The most likely better is die barren <laughs> than to have wicked sons and wicked daughters who don't want to keep the law, who don't miss a sin. For by one that had understanding shall the city be replenished. You see, the Lord the most likely, by the what? The one that keeping the law, that repentance, re, 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 sorry, that repent and keep the law, he's going to get the kingdom. He's going to get the, the rulership and when I'm established my kingdom here upon earth. By what? For by one that had understanding shall the city be replenished. The most that are going to replenish what? Righteous, lawful men. Because they're going to teach the law. They're going to teach thus the law. And how they're going to, that's how we're going to establish a lawful kingdom. Pay attention. But the kindred of the wicked shall speedily become desolate. I'm going to destroy them that are not keeping my law. So you say, what? Well, don't desire them on, on, on what? Unfruitful, ungodly sons, or unprofitable children, and their grandchildren, and their offspring, their multitude, because that would make them desolate. I'm taking them out. What? They don't keep my laws. Did I, did I say that? The Bible say what? But the kindred of the wicked shall speedily become desolate, destroyed. Many such things have I seen with mine eyes, and my ear had heard greater things than these. In the congregation of the ungodly shall a fire be kindled, and in a rebellious nation wrath is set a fire. You see that rebellion is what? Pride. Pride. Proudful, proud and prideful spirit. Rebellious spirit. Haughty spirit. Arrogant spirit. Boastful spirit. Pay attention. He was not pacified toward the old giants, who fell away in the strength of their foolishness. The most I say, I, 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 he didn't pacify himself towards the old giants. He take them out. <laughs> the most I say, what? I take them out from Genesis. I take them out. When the sons of men went into the daughters of women and giants were born in those days, Genesis 6. The most I say, I take them out. He was not pacified. I, I, I have no respect of persons. Genesis 6 and verse 2. And the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And they took them wives of all which they choose. You see that? So the children of God. The children of God live with the children of Satan. You see that? Pay attention. Which is what? True, true Cain seed. Cain seed. Adam seed. True set. Adam set. And his set children. The children of God. Live with who? Cain seed. Cain children. Which is Cain is the, the son of Satan. Now pay attention. Adam is the son of God. The sons of God. Live that what? So the daughters of men. The children of Cain. The children of God. Live with the children of Cain. True Satan. Satan's children. And they saw that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they choose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. 
Yet his days shall be 120 years. I'm minimizing his years from almost a thousand. You see that? Adam was 900 and how much years? Adam lived 90 or 90, somewhere around there. There were giants in the earth, Genesis 5 and verse. Adam lived to be Genesis 5 and 4. And the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were 800 years. And he begot sons and daughters. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years. You see that? And he died. 930 years Adam died. Back to Genesis 6 and verse 4. And there were giants in the earth in those, in those days because of the union with what? The children of Adam through Seth, the children of God, and the children of Cain through Satan. Pay attention. And there were giants in the earth in those days. And also that's that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, the children of God through Adam, Adam's seed lay with Satan's seed, which is Cain, to turn a Cain. Pay attention. <laughs> you to pay attention. Go back to Sirach 16 and verse 7. He was not pacified towards the old giants. You see that? He put them to death. Who fell away in the strength of their foolishness? He put them to death. He destroyed the whole world. That was the purpose of the flood. To take them all out. Um, Sirach 16 and verse 8. Neither spare he the place where lots of joined. Sodom and Gomorrah. You see that? Why did, why did he not spare Sodom and Gomorrah? But abhor them for their pride. He, he destroyed them for what? For their pride. 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 He, he must have like, burned them up for what? Their pride. Spirit of pride and arrogance. You see that? He pitied not the people of perdition. They what? They are the churn of perdition of Satan who were taken away in their sins. They are in the midst of sin. You didn't pay attention. He said, take out all the churn of Lot. You see, the, sorry, not the churn of Lot. The place where Lot sojourned, Sodom and Gomorrah. Take them out for pride. What's, and because in the midst of sin. Sin, sin. Nor the 600,000 footmen who were gathered together in the hardness of their hearts. In the pride and arrogance. See that? And if there be one stiff naked among the people, it is a marvel if he escape unpunished. If will be one what? Rebellious who the one who repent and keep the law. The most I say stiff neck or pride or arrogance or boastful is a marvel if he escape unpunished. The most I say what? For mercy and wrath are with him. He is mighty to forgive and to pour displeasure. I will forgive you if you will forsake, confess and forsake your sins, repent. Come back to them, Lord. But I will what? Pour displeasure or judgment on you or my wrath upon you. If you do not, if you continue in the spirit of pride, arrogance, boasting, haughtiness, and what I say there, I'm going to bring out what? I will pour my displeasure on you. As his mercy is great, so is his correction also. The most I say, as I am merciful, I'm wanting to repent, I will forgive you all your sins. Everything you do, I will forgive you, but what? The same way, so is his correction also. If you don't for, for, confess and forsake your sin, I will take you out. I will what? Destroy you. I will bring wrath upon you. I will woe or destruction upon you. That's what the most I says. He judges a man according to his works. If you keep my law, I forgive your sins. I, I, I pardon your sins. If you continue in, in the spirit of pride or violation of my law, in the midst of sin, I will destroy you. I have to destroy you. Go to the top of the verse says again. 11. And if there be one stiff naked who refuses to repent, we see that because of pride, among the people, it is a marvel if he escape unpunished. We will judge you. The sinner shall not escape with his spoils, and the patience of the godly shall not be frustrated. You see that the sinner or the prideful man or the arrogant man will not, shall not escape. That's a commandment. He shall not escape. Shall not. I will judge you. I will judge you. Go to um, Job chapter 41. Job 41 verse 1. Job 41 and verse 1. Just show you something. Job 41 verse 1. Can thou draw Leviathan with an hook? Leviathan with a hook? You see that? Could he catch Leviathan with a, with a hook? No. Or his tongue with a cord which thou lettest down? You see that? Can thou put a hook into his nose or bore, bore his jaw through with a thorn? Will he make many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? Will he make a covenant with thee? Will thou take him for a servant forever? Will thou play with him as with a bird? Or will thou bind him as thy, for thy maidens? Shall the companions make a banquet of him? These are questions, you see that? These are all questions that King Solomon is asking. Could you tame Leviathan? We go find out who Leviathan is. Shall they part him among the merchants? Can thou fill his skin with barb irons? Could you, could you pierce Leviathan's skin with barb irons? You see that? Or his head with fish spears? Can you pierce a fish spear, fish spear through Leviathan's head? Lay thine hand upon him. Remember the battle. Do no more. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? He said, when you see the Vita, he said, your hope is vain that they're trying to kill the Vita. He said, as a man, you mere mortals here, it's vain. Why? 
shall not be cast down even at the sight of him. He said, when you see the Leviathan and know who he is, you're going you're gonna to drop with, with fear. When you know who Leviathan is, you're going to drop with fear. None is so fierce that dares to him up. He said, none of all this fears is what to raise him up. Is it up to wake him up? Why? Who then is able to stand before him? Who can stand before him? Who had prevented me? What that I shall be? Who had prevented me that I should repay him? What service under the whole heaven is mine? In the most I say, what, everything under here, I rule it. That's mine. The most I say, everything I make there is mine. Everything under the whole heaven is mine. I will not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his comely proportion from the sin Leviathan. I will not hide him. Even this is, I'm going to reveal the power who he is. Who can discover the face of his garment? Or who can come to him with his double bridle? Who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible round about. His scales are his pride. His what? His scales. The vital and his scales on his, on his body are his pride. Shut up together as with a closed seal. As a what? With a closed seal. So there's what? Nothing going between that. That's what he's talking about. You pay attention. He's telling something heavy here. One is so near to another. The scales are so near to another. And Leviathan's skin. He said nothing killed up. You can throw your, your harbor john. Your, your spear. Your sword. He said nothing going between it. You cannot pierce him. You must say you cannot pierce him. He has power. His scale and his pride shut up together as, as with a closed seal. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. He said that air can even pass. They are joined one to another. They stick together that they cannot be sundered. They cannot be what? Sundered. They can't sew him neither. <laughs> you can't get beat. You can't pierce the scales. I'll be telling you. But by his knees sing a light doth shine, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Bright. Out of his mouth go burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. You see that what we call what? Dragon. <laughs> you see that? Out of his mouth go what? Burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. Oh, you see the show this movie and dragon. Fire breathing dragon. Pay attention. Out of his nostrils go at smoke. As out of a seeding pot of co or cauldron. You see that? They show the dragon burning fire and smoke come out his nose. Yeah. His breath kindled coals. It burned coals. And a flame go out of his mouth. You see that? His flame go out of his mouth. Fire. In his neck remained strength. And sorrow is turned into joy before him. The flakes of his flesh are joined together. They are firm in themselves. They cannot be removed. They cannot be moved. His heart is as firm as a stone. Yea, as, a, as hard as a piece of of the netta mill stone. You see that so what? He's immovable. Immovable. That we're talking about. When he raises up himself, the mighty are afraid. When he what? When Leviathan rise up, who? Mighty men are fear, fearful. By reason of breaking, they purify themselves. You see that? For, for fear that he smash them, they will repent and confess the sin. Pay attention. They what purify themselves? They will go, repair, repent. For fear of him. The sword of him that laid at him cannot hold. The spear, the dart, nor the habergen. So nothing can take him out. Nothing can pierce his armor. He estimates iron as straw. He said iron as, is as straw to him. Pay attention because he's so tough. And brass as rotten wood. You see that? It's going to crack against his, his scales. The arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones are turned with him into stubble. You see that? Darts are counted as stubble. He laughed at the shaking of a spear. You see that? You, 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 you change a spear him. He said, I'm going to laugh at you. Sharp stones are under him. He spread it sharp point, pointed things upon the mire. He make it the deep to boil like a pot, and he make it the sea like a pot of ointment. He make it a part to shine after him. One would think the deep to be hoary. Upon earth there is not his like. You see, King Solomon saying, sorry, Job is saying there is not a light upon this earth. As the writer. Who is made without fear? He is fearless. He beholdeth all high things. He what? He beholdeth all high things of the, you know, of the heavenly things. He is a king over all the children of pride. He is a what? The, a king over all the children of pride. He beholdeth all high things. He know things. He know things. And he beholdeth all things. He's a king over the children of pride. Go to Revelation 12 and 9. He's a king over who? The children of pride. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. Because Leviathan, you see, he blew in fire out his mouth. He blew, smoke coming out his nose. Revelation chapter 12 verse 9. And the great dragon. The great what? The great dragon. Leviathan, we're just reading about him here. He hold fast. He don't fear, don't fear nothing. You see that? Pay attention. He is the king over all the children of pride. If you're prideful, the devil. <laughs> Pay attention. We're in Sirach 10. What does Sirach 10 say? Sirach chapter 10 and verse 8. Sirach 10 and verse 13. For pride is the beginning of sin. You see that? Pride, verse 12, the beginning of pride 
is when one departed from God and his heart is turned away from his maker. So when he had to depart from God, he turned away from the maker, the most high, who he turned to? The devil. The devil. You see that? For pride is the beginning of sin. Pride is the what? The beginning of sin. Pride is hateful before God and man. Pride is the beginning of sin because why? Um, Job 41 and 34. He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. The devil. So when he depart from God because of pride, yes, who he is worshiping? The devil. Leviathan. You see, the, the, the dragon. Leviathan, he's the king over the throne of pride, over the throne of disobedience. Pay attention, the throne of, the throne of Satan. Go back to um, Revelation 12 and 9. And the great dragon, you see that Leviathan, we just read about who blew it in fire through mouth and spoke through his nostrils, was cast out. That old serpent, you see that he's a dragon, he's called what also what? The old serpent from the Genesis in the, in the, the garden with Eve, Genesis 3, that deceived Eve. <laughs> Cain was conceived through Eve, by through the devil. Pay attention. That great dragon called and the old serpent called the devil and Satan. He's who? The devil that would deceive even the beginning. You see that? And that same Leviathan in Job 41, who is the king over the throne of pride. You pay attention. That could make men melt. Mortals say are gonna melt. That we're talking to when they see who he is. When he show his face, that would say um verse Job 41 and verse 16. Twenty-four. His heart, his mind, is as firm as a stone. Yes, yet, yea, as hard as a piece of another millstone. You see, because he's steadfast. He sent an assignment, and he will do his assignment. He has no respect of person. He will take you out. He sent to do what you have to do, deceive you, take you out. He will do what you have to do. To pay attention, there's no no remorse. <laughs> he's doing what you have to do. Verse twenty-five. When when he raised it up himself, the mighty afraid. When he show his true, his true colors, you see what? The mighty men on the earth tremble of fear. It's by, by reason of breakings, they purify themselves. You see that? They because they realize they're about to get taken. They run back to the Lord. <laughs> they run back to the Lord. He shot mighty men down. The devil himself, that we pay paying attention, jump to verse 12 and 9, and the dragon was cast out at all so when they play with the spirit of pride, pay, pay attention, they play with Satan, you put in the devil tail, <laughs> and the great dragon was cast out, and that old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He's who? The devil and Satan. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out of him. Satan and his fallen angels. Pay attention. The, 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 um, Job 41, the Leviathan, yeah, he's a devil. He's a king over the children, of, all the children of pride. <laughs> Pay attention. With the Sirach 32 and verse 1. Sirach 32, verse 1. Sirach 32 and 1. If thou be made the master of a feast, lift not, lift not up thyself up among them as one of the rest. You see that? So don't be, if you get invited, humble yourself, be me. Take diligent care for them and, and so say down. Say, be humble. He's talking about be humble. Pour not out words where there is a musician and show not forth wisdom out of time. Don't speak out of time. You see, him. hold a peace. A concert of music in a banquet of wine is a signet of a carbon and sorry, is as a signet of carbon to setting gold. Verse 7. Speak, young man, if there be need of thee, and yet scarcely when thou art asked twice. Uh, thou art twice asked. So you say what? Speak if there be need for you to speak. That we say, don't just talk, 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 or talk on the turn, talk on the text, talk and babble. You see what? Speak if there be need for you to speak, and yet scarcely when thou art asked twice. You see what? Even if somebody asks a question, it don't mean you have to answer. Even though the answer, you have to answer. You see what? When you, let them ask you again, then, then you answer. That we're talking about is humility. Showing humility, not pride or arrogance. Let thy peace be short. You see that? So when you're answering, keep it simple. Answer, answer the question, shut up. That we say. Answer the question, shut up. Hold your peace again. Let thy peace be short. Comprehending much in few words. So you can say a lot with a few words. Then, then you see that? Little with many words. That babble, 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 babble. <laughs> talk, just talk, talk, talk. Let thy peace be short. Comprehending much in few words, you can see that. Get to the point, boom. Brief, bit short and simple. He says short and sweet. Be as one that know it and yet holds his tongue. I understand, I know the answer, I have the answer, but still hold your tongue. Don't babble because I know the answer. <laughs> we say talking about. Don't be prideful, arrogant, spirit of pride. If thou be among great men, make not thyself equal with them. That's why. He say if you're among what? Great men, make not thyself equal with them. So by you babbling, 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 you're equating yourself with the men. Of the Lord, is it like of great men among you, or wise men, or ancient men? That we say, you're trying to equate yourself with them. So we'll check your spirit. And when ancient men are in place, use not many words. That we say, 
in just many places, hold your peace. That's what he's saying. Hold your peace. You know many words. It's all the spirit of pride. Before the thunder goeth lightning and before a shame faced man shall go favor. So that's what so when you hold a peace, you're shame faced. When you babble, 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 you're full of pride. It's the devil on you. Every time you say you got the devil on you. So other than that, you're supposed to be what? Shame faced. Before the thunder goeth lightning and before a shame faced man, man shall go favor. Shame faced. Hold this peace. They, they take they take thy pastime. Sorry. And do what thou wilt, but sin not by proud speech. Do what? Sin not by proud speech. Because the beginning of um, pride is when one departed from God. It's the beginning of sin. By talk, 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 talk. You see that? Trying to make yourself sound good or look good. You're in the midst of sin. You're committing sin. That we're talking. Speaking all the time. Speaking things you're supposed to speak. For these things bless him that made thee. And that replenish thee with his good things. You see that? Whoso fear the Lord will receive his discipline, and they that seek him early shall find favor. Um, he that seeketh the Lord shall be filled therewith, but the hypocrite will be offended thereat. So a hypocrite will be offended at what? The laws. When they bring the law to him, stop being prideful, stop being arrogant, stop being boastful. He's what? He will be offended. You will you call it a hypocrite. A sinful man will not be reproved, but find it an excuse according to his will. So if you're a sinful man or a child will deliver a ten of the devil, <laughs> because the pride. The beginning of pride is when you depart from God, so you follow in the devil. So you what you'll be you become a sinful man and you will not be reproved. But finding an excuse according to his will, so you make excuses. Trying to but me and the excuses buffering around. I don't accept. Say, oh yeah, I, I will miss a sin. I have a pride spirit, I will check it. Let me check my spirit, let me humble up, you see that? And then the devil take me. A man of counsel will be considerate, but a strange and proud man is not daunted with fear. You see that? As pride man, he ain't kicked in no correction, he don't mean nothing to him. Even when he of himself, he had done without counsel. He done, you see that? He gone and do your own thing. Do nothing without advice. And when thou was once done, repent not. He said, don't do anything without God, the counsel of God, the ancient men or the elders or the wise men among you. He that believeth in the Lord, take it to the commandments. That we're talking about. If you believe, you go to obey. So, um, go to Isaiah 3. Read Isaiah 3 again for me. Isaiah 3, read 1 to 5. Isaiah 3, 1 to 5 again. I read from um, verse 4. And I will give children to be their Isaiah 3 and 4 and 5. And I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them in the captivity. The most I say, children go be your princes, and babes go rule over them. You see that these young ones, young guns, go be ruling over you. Arrogant as hell, full of pride because they are ruling with who? The spirit of Satan. That's about the, did I say it? the Bible? <laughs> Pay attention. You see, Lord, the, 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 the most I give me spirit to rule over them. Good. Then let's see why. Remember, the most I let's. let's um, Absalom get put to death. <laughs> he leads Absalom to get put to death. Take the David throne and lead him to what? Deceive him behind and get put to death. Pay attention. Go back to Sirach 10 and verse 7. Pride is hateful before God and man. Most I say hate pride. Arrogant, you arrogant, boastful young ones, these young guns. And by both that one committing iniquity in the midst of sin. You are in the midst of sin when you have the prideful, arrogant spirit. Jump to verse 12. The beginning of pride is when one departed from God. When you have the prideful, arrogant, boastful spirit, you have departed from God. And his heart is turned, your mind is turned away from his maker. Your mind is away from the your maker. So your mind is to who? Leviathan, the devil, that old dragon, the devil and Satan. Pay attention. For pride is the beginning of sin. You're in the midst of sin. <laughs> You're in the midst of sin. Go back to um, Isaiah 3 and verse 4. And I will give children to be their princes and babes are ruling them. Them young ones who rule over you, they're in the midst of sin. Sinners are ruling over you because you're in a sinful kingdom. You're in a sin. Did I say that? With the wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon. That's the one. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, chapter 1 and verse 14. For he created all things that they might have their being, and the generations of the world were helpful, and there is no poison of destruction in them. No, the kingdom of death upon the earth. You're in the kingdom of death. You're in hell. <laughs> the kingdom of what? The kingdom of death upon the earth. Go back to Isaiah 3 and verse 4. And I will give children to be their princes. Because we are the Israelites, the honorable, the ancient, we are in our captivity. We are conquered in the kingdom of death. So who's ruling, ruling over you? The them prideful ones who are following Satan. You see that the following one? The old dragon. Full of pride and arrogance and boastful. Pay attention. Bible. Yeah, that's what most I said. And I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. Them young ones, you see that? They're full of pride and arrogance. Pay attention. And no respect. 
and the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. And the child, or them young ones, shall behave themselves proudly against the ancient, the ancient men of the Lord. You see that? The men of God, you see that? And the base against the honor, they are the base men, or the sinful men against the honorable men, or the law-keeping men, or the righteous men, or the lawful men. Pay attention. You see that? You see the most, but the most I said in here, you're following Satan. <laughs> Pay attention. You're ruling with the spirit of Satan. Pay attention. This is the Bible. Go to Isaiah chapter 2. I'm reading down. Isaiah chapter 2. I'm reading 1. And going down. The word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flaunt it. So the Most High saying what? In the last days. Jump to verse 12 first. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty and upon everyone that is lifted up and he shall be brought low. Go up to verse 1. The word of that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Concerning who? Judah and Jerusalem, Israelites. You see that? Everyone that is proud going to be what? Brought low. Lofty, high-minded, haughty. You see that? Boastful going to be brought low. They will be a base because great ruling over them. You see that? And the, 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 the young child, the child be even proudly against the ancient. Pay attention because they're ruling the spirit of the devil. And most I say, I come to shut, shut them down. They're in the sinful kingdom. They will be in the daddy. That's what the most I say. The daddy, the dragon, the great, the, you see the Leviathan, the devil himself. Isaiah 2 and verse 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain. The Israelites going back to rulership. Rulership of this earth. And shall be exalted above the hills. All other nations. And all nations shall flow unto it. All these hidden nations going into captivity. Going under the Israelites. Thus said the Lord. And many people shall go and say. Come ye. And let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. To the house of the God of Jacob. You see that to the who? The God of the Israelites. Pay attention. And he will teach us of his ways. You see that they will, will bow down and be willing to learn the law. And we will, we will walk in his path. They will have to keep the law or they will die. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. Out of what? The Israelites, when the Mosai reestablishes his, his everlasting kingdom, just the laws shall go forth in the last days. That's what Mosai says. So we got next. We got the next kingdom. Mosai say what? The law shall go forth. You see that? So pay attention to what's happening now. The Mosai is laying the groundwork. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations. He shall do what? Judge among the nations, all these hidden nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares. No more war. The most I say what? No more war. Their weapons going into what? Tools. You're going to work now. You're going to work. The most I say. Your swords shall be beat into what plowshares? You're going to, the, to work to the fields. And their spears into pruning hooks. You're going to work. Pruning hooks to do what? You see that? Pay attention. In the fields, all these hidden nations, the most I says. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. No more war. Neither shall they learn war anymore. The most I say, I'm shutting it down. I bring in law and order. You see that? You see the order after chaos? It's law and order. Yahushua Mashiach, the most I go establishing his kingdom. Talking about this garbage, but they, they, they see that? The new world order and all kind of garbage. Deceivers, devils, deceiving it behind. The most is about to establish law and order under the Israelites ruling the earth. You see that? Pay attention. Because they're full of pride. That's why they talk like that. That's what the most I say. What was it? The spirit of Satan, Leviathan. O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. O who? You Israelites, scattered in the four corners, conquered. You see that throughout the, 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 the earth. Let, you see that in base condition, and base and humiliated. The most I say what? Come and walk in the light of the Lord. Proverbs 6, 23, for the commandments of the lamp and the Lord's light. Come under the laws. You see that? Therefore thou has forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they, are re they, they be replenished from the east and, sorry, they be replenished from the east and are soothsayers in the midst of sin, witchcraft, like the Philistines, they're in the midst of witchcraft like the heathens, and they please themselves in the children of strangers. You see that? They hook up. You see that? Align to these heathen children. Heathen. That's what the most I say. Jump to verse 11. Isaiah 2 and 11. The lofty looks of man shall be humble. Pride. And the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down. You will humble down. Haughtiness is most I have a problem with the prideful spirit. The, the loftiness of men shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. Most I say, I, have the, I, I am the one that's supposed to be proud. Is it not you? For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. Proud, lofty, lifted up, arrogant. You see that? Boastful, most I say. You will be brought low. I'm bringing it up. I 
I'm bringing you down, humbling you. And they shall go into the, the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for the fear of the Lord and for, for pride and arrogance. And what? The glory, for the glory of his majesty, when he arises to shake terribly the earth. He coming to do what? Shake terribly the earth. He said that in that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they had made each one for himself to worship. Most I say what? I'm coming to shake this earth, to shake this kingdom. Pay attention. So the pride going down. The prideful are going down. With the Surak chapter 48 and verse 18. Surak 48, verse 18. Surak 48 and 18. In his time, Sennacherib came up and sent Rab, Rab, Rab Sukhshes and lifted up his hand against Zion. You see that? So he went, Sennacherib come against the Israelites. He said in the time of Ezekiel. So we just read it. And he, and what? And lifted up his hand against Zion and boasted proudly. Sennacherib did what? Boasted proudly. That was what? Then trembled their hearts and hands, and they were in pain and as women in travail. But they called upon the Lord, which is merciful, and stretched out their hands toward him. And immediately the Holy One heard them out of heaven and delivered them by the ministry of Isaiah. You see that? You must say what? Delivered them by the ministry of Isaiah. Isaiah was praying with Hezekiah. He smote the host of the Assyrians. He did what? He smote the host of the Assyrians. Because of what? He was what? Boastful. He boasted proudly because of pride. Pride. What did he do in Nebuchadnezzar? The same thing. I build this kingdom and I establish this and immediately Mosai said before the word was out of his mouth, Mosai take him out. You're done. Your kingdom is done. For Ezekiel had done the thing that pleased the Lord. Ezekiel was humble himself, keeping the laws. You see that? And Sennacherib was what? Boasting proudly. So the devil was just saying Matthew 5 and 5. The meek shall inherit the earth. You have to humble. You must humble and be shamefaced. The Mosai said what? You will bow down, otherwise I will take you out. Pay attention. Otherwise I will take you out. Go to um, 1 Samuel 2 and 3. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 3. 1 Samuel 2 and 3. Talk no more so exceeding proudly, and let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by Him actions are weighed. So don't have the spirit of pride. Don't be boasting. Don't be arrogant. You see that? Don't be prideful. Full of pride and wicked. Most I say what? Talk no more so exceeding proudly, and not arrogancy. Don't have arrogancy or be haughty. Don't have them spirit. Don't attribute. Because why? The Mosai is a God of knowledge. I know, I'm watching all and I see, and by Him your actions are weighed, because I'm going to judge it according to you as it's done. Uh, yeah. By Him actions are weighed. Go to um, Sirach 20 and 1. Sirach chapter 20, verse 1. There is a reproof that is not comely. There's a correction that is not good. You see that? You, 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 you only say it's not good, you'll you, you, you get hurt. But, that, but, but by not comely meaning, you, you'll get hurt. You might hit you, boom. See that? When you are calling you out, you're going good. There's a reproof that is not comely against someone who let his tongue and his wise. It is much better to, re to be to reprove than to be angry. He says, better to what, correct or rebuke your brother. You see that? Or reprove him and than to be secret. You see that? Holding grudge. Holding him in your mind and saying, you wicked as I'll stay from him. And he know where he know why he is just staying away from him. So reprove him, rebuke him, and correct him. You see that? And he that confesses his fault shall be preserved from hurt. So when he acknowledges he do you wrong, you see what? He could be preserved from the destruction the most I could bring upon him for that sin. That was Matthew 18 talking about. You see that? Go and tell him his fault between you and him. Go and correct him. Go rebuke him. How good is it when thou art reproved to show repentance? For so shalt thou escape willful sin. When you get rebuked or reproved, you see that? The most I say what? When you repent and confess his sin and forsake it, you could escape what? Willful sin. So if you continue doing it, continue this. What? Willful sin. You don't want to repent. Willful sin. Then to go to jump to verse 5, there is one that keepeth silence and is found wise, and another by much babbling becometh hateful. You see that talker, 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 talk, pride again, the same pride spirit. Become what? Hateful by much babbling. Some man holdeth his tongue because he had not to answer. Because, because what? He could control that prideful spirit. He's shamefaced, he has the humble spirit. He have the, you know, I know the answer because he had not to answer, but I don't need to answer right now. And some keep at silence knowing his time. You see that? I don't need to answer now. I don't need to talk now. I don't need to disrupt you now. What are we saying? I need, don't need to show forth my wisdom and my understanding. I know this understanding this. And I'm just talking, talking, talking to you. I, I don't need to. What are we saying? A wise man will hold his tongue till he see opportunity. If you're wise, you will speak at the right time. At the right time. You don't need to talk all the time. You need to, because I know this, I know this. That, but a babbler and a fool will have no time. You see, because I understand this, I just talk, 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 talk. Because the Bible says you're a babbler and a fool. You're a babbler and you're foolish. You regard nothing. Let's talk. 
because they know. Talk because they know. That's a prideful spirit. Pro. He that used that many words shall be abhorred. You see that a talker, 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 gonna be what? Hated. Abhorred means hated. And he that take to himself authority, therein shall be hated. You see that, that you're taking what? Authority. What are you doing? You're taking the floor. That we're talking about. I know this. I understand this. I know this. I understand this. Yep, 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 yep. You're taking the floor. You just said, you post, I said, therein you shall be hated. You're taking authority to yourself. There's a sinner that had good success in everything. You call it a sinner. You, tip it. you see that? You have good success in what? Evil things. Evil things. And there's a gain that turns to a loss. And so that knowledge and that wisdom you get, and you're babbling, 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 most of the time you pull it from me. That gain will turn to a loss. So you gotta be this most I say that that pride, the spirit of pride, I hate that, I hate pride. <laughs> I hate pride. I hate pride. Go to um, Leviticus 19, verse 17. Read James 3 first. Read James chapter 3 and verse 1 first. James chapter 3 and verse 1. My brethren, be not be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able to, to bridle the whole body. So if you don't offend somebody at some point, you say what? You're perfect already. You're, you're achieved perfection. So what? He's striving for, for perfection. So that's what we're talking about. Overcome it. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth. You say, well, you put a bit in the horse's mouth to shut him out. You see, to, 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 to train him. That they may obey us. That they may what? Obey him. And train him and tame him. And we turn about their whole body. So we control him how we want them. Behold, also the ships. Which though they be so great, massive ships, you see that, massive cruise liners, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm. You see that, that's that, that, that wheel, the most I say, what, that's that little thing, and the sail, and I controlling that. And with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor is, the, 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 the captain, wherever it guided, it going. Even so, the tongue is a little member. Your tongue is a small thing in your body, and boasted great things. You see that, you walk out of that mouth, coming great boastful thing. Boast is what? Pride, pride, boast. Great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire can let. You see that? It's a little what? Fire. That thing that comes out of your mouth that you're boasting about. It will kindle something big. A big fire. Or plenty sin. And the tongue is a fire. A world of iniquity. The What comes out of here? It says a world of sin. So be mindful. Let me say it. Be mindful. Hold your mouth. So is the, so is the tongue among our members. That it defiled the whole body. But if you don't mind what's coming out of your mouth, he said go defile your body. Sin. You cause it to sin and set it on fire the course of nature and it and it is set on fire of hell. It is set on what? Of fire in hell. That tongue. Be mindful what coming from it. My father always warned from a kid. Be mindful what you're saying. <laughs> you see. Be mindful what you're saying. There's a reason he used to tell you that. There's ears around you that we used to tell you. You didn't understand it until you grew older. <laughs> Pay attention. And now you're coming to the truth, you understand it even more. For every kind of beast and of birds and of, and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and had been tamed of mankind so mankind tame everything that is that we say mankind tame everything on this earth but what but the tongue can no man tame no man can what tame the tongue that mouth that mouth it is an unruly evil it is a what an unruly evil the way thing that the the warning in so warning here about but but mine you see that mine pride and pride and we're saying speech sin not by proud speech it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison it's on what unruly evil full of dead, 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 deadly poison David blessed we God even the father and David cursed we men you see that be pleasant to the most high I love the Lord you see that married to the Lord and you, you, you're cursing your brethren I mean, you're hating your brethren, hating your brethren. you ain't keeping the law you nail the law to the cross you see that in the midst of sin and you, feel, you see that you hate him he's a devil he's a evil he's crazy what do they call him who show when he come they call him mad they call him crazy what do they call Paul they call him mad they call him crazy you the attention because they understand it it's above your pay grade it's above your pay grade when you repent and forsake a sin and come back to the law. You're spiritually heightened. Your level of understanding is above pay, pay grade. You see spirits, you see them. When you see, you see, you see spirits, you see the people. You see the, what, they, what they're really about. You see people for who they really are. That's what you're talking about, seeing spirits. You see their the attributes, their natural attributes, because you have, you're on a different level of understanding. You see what? There with bless we God, even the Father, and there with curse we men. Which are made after the similitude of God. You say what you're blessing the most, you're praying to the most, but you're cursing your virgin. Which God said, never going to make man in our own image and likeness. Pay attention. You're being a, de a, a deceitful hypocrite, that we say. Which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed what? Proceed that blessing and cursing. You say that out of the same mouth, you're blessing the most, I God, and you're cursing your virgin. <laughs> you're prideful and arrogant. Most I say, you don't fear me. 
My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Paul said, don't be a hypocrite or deceitful. You see that? Don't be full of pride or arrogance. That a fountain sent forth at the same place, sweet water and bitter. He said, when a fountain bring up water, is sweet water and bitter water coming at the same time? No. Is that sweet or is that a bitter? Can you see that? So what coming out of your mouth? Either you, you believe or you don't believe. That's what Don't be deceitful. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Can it get olive berries of a fig tree? No. Either a vine figs or a vine tree bear figs? No. Fig come from a fig tree. So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh water? Impossible. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? He said, who is the wise among you and, and endued with what? Knowledge. Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. With what? Meekness of wisdom. You see that? Exuding wisdom in meekness. Not with what? Pride. Arrogance. Just boastful, boastful, boastful. Educate the people and edify the people. As we talk, meekness of wisdom. Educate them. Edify them. Piece up by piece upon piece up. Here a little, there a little. And give them the understanding. Give them the sense. You see that? But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, in your mind, grow in up. And lie not against the truth. Don't, don't give your own thoughts or your own feelings or your own emotions. Most I say, I don't care about your own feelings. I don't care about your own emotions. What? This wisdom descended not from above. This is not from the Most High God. You see, if you have that prideful, arrogant, boastful spirit, you see that about me. It's all about me. Exalting myself. You see that? No. I'm not glorifying the Most High God. I'm not saying, Thus said the Lord. You see that? Is what? This wisdom descended not from above. Not about the Most High. It's what about you feel? What about you think? You see that? Of the what? The devil, the Leviathan, <laughs> the old dragon, Satan. You see, that, this, it, it, if it descends not from above, where descends from what? But it's earthly, it, it's from here. You see that? Reading a verse, giving your own thoughts. Reading a verse and doing the opposite. Reading the laws of God and being a hypocrite or deceitful. Coveting after God don't belong to you. Being extortioners. You see that? And the Bible says, and you know the law. Mosai say what? It's not of the Mosai. This what? This wisdom descended not from above. It's not of the Mosai, but it's earthly, sensual, devilish. It's of Satan. Devilish. That we're talking about. Once you're giving your own thoughts or your own spinning, you're adding to God's words or you're subtracting from God's words, it's of Satan. Pay attention. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. You see that? But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, then gentle. Most I say, I will guide you through the book. You see that? Peace above and peace up. Show the mysteries, show the wisdom, show them what this transgression and what rebuke and reprove them openly. You see that? That others, others may fear. Those that sin be, 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 be before all that others may fear. Show them. Show my people the transgression. Are we saying? Cry aloud and spare them. Don't spare their feelings. Go and show them the transgression. I said in the house of Jacob, it says Isaiah 58 and verse 1. Go and show them the sins. You see that? But that's a, the wisdom that is from above is first pure. You see that? Unto the pure, all things are pure. But to them that, that are defiled is, is nothing pure. Go to um, Titus 1 and 14. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Don't listen to the lies. You see that lies, Jewish fables, Jewish lies, and commandments of men. M making their own doctrine. You see that? Traditions of men, lies. And you see that? Read one verse and get your own spin and your own opinion. You see that? Babble, 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 babble because of pride. You see that? Until the pure, all things are pure. Until the what? The pure. The pure in mind, all things are pure. You see that? All things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. They are what? Defiled. Because the devil got their mind and, and unbelieving, they don't believe in the Most High God is nothing pure, nothing makes sense to them, nothing is pure to them or clean to them. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. You see that? They deny haters of God. They talk, 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 I know God. You see that? With, 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 let's read that one. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. Their actions is contrary to what they're saying. Go back to um, James 3 and verse. Nine, there with what? Bless we God. You see that? We know God, even the Father, and there with curse we men. You see that? You're denying him by cursing the brethren. You see that? You're hating the brethren. By babbling, babbling, being a prideful, arrogant boaster. You see that? Against the most, against the brethren. Most I say what? I don't know. You're, you're impure. Which are made after the similitude of, of men. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. You see that? You, you, you have a forked tongue that we say. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Not supposed to be so. Jump to verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated because they come from the Most High, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, no respect of person, and without hypocrisy, no hypocrisy, no deceit. Pay attention. No pride or arrogance. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. You see that? So go to Leviticus 19 17. In them that what? Make peace. Great peace of David, love the Lord. Who will make peace of? Spread the law. Teach the Lord. Thus say the Lord. 
Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart, in your mind. You see that you sometimes hold no grudge against your brother? Or what? Thou, thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor, reprove or correct or cry aloud and show him his transgression or her, her transgression. You see that? Reveal. Reveal their sins and get them to repent. Show them to repent. You must be in the midst of sin. You must repent. And not suffer sin upon them. If you don't rebuke or correct or reprove them, you allow them to live in sin. You see that to get put to death. <laughs> Destruction is waiting for them. Don't know what I say. Warn to them. Would the prideful who, if you have the spirit of pride, pride is when the man won't depart from God. You have to pay attention. You will miss a sin. You follow the devil. Say so to what? Warn them. Give them warning from me. Thou shalt not hear thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt in any way rebuke thy neighbor, which is your brother, and not suffer sin upon him. You see that? Rebuke him or correct him or correct his sin. Point out his sin. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. So that brother or that neighbor is the children of your people. The Israelites you are talking to. You see that? Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That brother or that neighbor is the children of your people. Who is your neighbor or the children of your people? You see that? I am the Lord. Who is he talking to? Who gets the lawsuit? The children of Israel. Pay attention. <laughs> so you're supposed to correct your brother in the children of Israel. You see that? So the spirit of pride is the spirit of the Leviathan, the old dragon, the devil and Satan. And it's when what? Depart from God. The beginning of pride is when one depart from God. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 13. Proverbs 8 and verse 13. Proverbs. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the fraud mouth do I hate. The most I say I hate that. That prideful spirit, arrogant spirit and the evil way is evil. Because it's of the devil. You see that? I pray you get some understanding from today's class. Shalom.